Thank you, Gary Saperstein. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I am not Nicole Kidman on anabolic steroids. No, my name is Varla Jr., a star of stage and screen. Please hold your applause. And I am just so thrilled to be a part of the second annual Pink Sonoma. That's right, you see, this event benefits positive images in Sonoma County, supporting LGBTQ plus youth for over 30 years. So by you being a part of this event, you are supporting the next generation of up and coming gays. Yas, queen, yas. <laughs> That's how they talk. So let's have a toast, right? A toast to Pink Sonoma. Now I, of course, am drinking uh, my Echo Torreno Wines and Vineyards 2019 Desert Rose Rosé. Mm. It's actually named after the founder, Mark Lyon's mother, Rose. Yeah. You know, I was thinking of maybe naming a, a wine after my mother. Yeah, I thought I'd call it Nosy Bitch Cabernet. <laughs> Rolls right off the tongue. Well, I was thrilled when Pink Sonoma called me, well, called my people. That's how I work. And they asked me to make some Bellinis. Well, I love Bellinis. So I ran out and I bought some Prosecco and some peach juice. Now imagine my surprise when this came in the mail. A Gary Danko Bellini kit. Bellini, a Russian pancake. Now, do I look like the type of woman who could make a Russian pancake? <laughs> Don't answer that. I know, strong like bull. But it is true, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if I can do it, even though even though the, the, the instructions are so easy and put together that you could make it. I shouldn't be making Russian pancakes. I've, I've obviously been drinking for several hours, give or take 47 years. So I thought, what could I do? How could I find a chef as exquisite as Gary Danko? Well, it turns out, Gary Danko is very familiar with me. <laughs> he has kicked me out of his restaurant on several occasions. And so I had a few of my big burly friends uh, put Gary in the trunk of my Toyota Camry, and he is with us today. So Gary, come on in. He has a slight head injury. Gary, oh, Gary, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you for helping me out. You know, I just, I'd rather watch. I, I love to watch. Look how tall Gary oh, is. Yes. Oh, I look petite. I have no pumps. <laughs> no, I look like Ariana Grande's grandmother. Yes, yeah, so how do we make these blinis? And the, and the kit comes with everything. What do I need to buy? So basically, the kit comes with um, the smoked salmon, with, with the Ocetra caviar from Sustainable Source in the Sacramento Delta. The caviar and the salmon we use in the restaurant. And then we have the kits. So I basically divided it into two kits. Um, and we're going to do a two bowl method today, which seems odd to a lot two of people. Two bowl method. Well, two is better than one, I suppose, in anything. Well, you know, a lot of people have commented that these blinis are better than set. So I thought it would be worth waiting for. <laughs> well, let's have both and we'll find exactly. out. Exactly. So, what, what, a two, well, why are we using two different bowls of, of bladders? Of batters? Bladders. <laughs> well, basically, there's a few reasons that um, when you make a, anything with yeast, you don't want salt to hit the yeast immediately so it dies. And then also, there's two egg yolks in this, and the yolks tend to clean around the yeast and keep them from activating. Yes. Otherwise, you would have a crepe, which yeah, would well, be delicious as well. But well, I've been known to have a yeast problem myself, but <laughs> let's not talk about that. You right know, now. I've noticed there's a shortage of yeast these days because I think everybody's home baking. So, oh, really? Everyone. Everyone except for. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Drag queens don't cook. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no. So what do we do? These bowls look like we molded off to you. Just look at that. <laughs> so now we're gonna do a two a two um, bowl of batter here. And basically you wanna mix them and then they're gonna sit for an hour. And that's what they call proofing. And so historically you would proof yeast to make sure that it was alive. With the new yeast, um, and if you're making this without buying the kit, the recipe's online, but it's called rapid yeast or whatever, and then there's the German version here, so. Okay, um, and this comes in the kit? Um, the kit, it already comes in the um, package oh, number one. You thought of everything. So basically in package number one is the, the flour, so we have a cup of white flour, and then I'm gonna add sugar. So sugar adds food to the yeast. Okay. Okay, and as well, there's starch in the flour that adds food as well, and then we're gonna add yeast, so. When do we get to eat them? Well, waiting. that takes a little while, so <laughs> you'll have time to do your nails in between okay. proofing. They're done, they're done, they're done. A few more glasses of rosé. Yes. Oh, delicious, yes. So now we're going to start with basically the batter, and I have here a cup of milk, and I've warmed it to baby bottle temperature, and I know that you know that because you've raised a lot of Oh, yes, yes, I've nursed several. 
today. And so basically we have, this is my choice of weapon here. Oh my god. This is called a balloon whisk. Okay. Um, and use it typically to beat egg whites, but I like it because it's very efficient in um, mixing. So we're going to start here and just mix it. And we're going to start and we're going to pour almost all of the liquid in there and we're going to just beat it until it's very smooth. Okay. All right, so I'm not stopping, I'm just going and going. You know, the thing is that depending on what part of the country you are in, if it's if it's moist out, you're not going to use much milk. But what you're looking for is, you see how the whisk marks stay in there for a minute? Yes. And then they slowly disappear. So basically, that's batter number one. We're going to put a cover on it, and we're going okay. to basically just move that over here. And it's going to sit, and that sits for about an hour. The next one is a cup of buckwheat flour. Buckwheat. Buckwheat. You remember buckwheat? Oh, yes, I do. Anyhow, buckwheat is the sort of grain they use in Russia. I think before they had wheat available. Um, it's a flavor that it's very strong in buckwheat. So I mix the flour and half you know, a cup of buckwheat. So in this one, we're going to take two egg yolks. Two egg yolks. Okay. We're just going to set them right there, and then we're going to add three quarters of a cup or six ounces of milk, and do the same exact thing. So, so this is something you do in the morning. You basically let it sit for an hour and then you're going to combine them and then add the whipped egg whites from the two um, the two eggs and then the, um, four tablespoons of heavy cream. So this is the same thing. See, this is a little tight. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> no one's ever said that to me, Gary. <laughs> well, not recently. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm just going to add the other one, but you want to go by texture. So, all right, so this is where I want it. So basically, you can go lay down, and I'm then we're exhausted, gonna, Gary. I'm exhausted. Then we're gonna fast forward to proofed batter. So I'm gonna just get rid of this. Um, so this is what it looks like an hour later. Oh. And so basically, the fermentation period helps, you know, activate the yeast, but it also develops the flavor in um, the batter. So you want to do that. Um, so we have this one here, and then we're gonna take the. So these have all rested an hour. Yes. You basically want to cover them just to keep them from crusting over. So what you want to do is take the, the buckwheat and put it into the yeast batter here. And then I just leave that there. I take the egg whites, which I'm going to then beat, and I started beating them just gently. Uh, because it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to whip these up until they're light and frothy. Egg whites. Correct. Just two egg whites and you know, the two yolks. And you want to get soft food stuff. So. See how efficient this whisk is? I see. The balloon whisk. Who knew? You know, we do see plays in the restaurant, and I have had people that go to the gym every day and are muscle people. Yeah. And they have these balloon whisks. They cannot beat the egg whites. <laughs> Look at that. 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 Look you know, a lot of people have a tendency to want to mix it, but then we're going to whip the cream in the same manner. So just two, four tablespoons of cream. I'm just going to whip it like this. Obviously, I put air into both of these. It's going to help make a lighter batter. All right, so perfect. So they basically have this. And then we're going to fold. So basically, you want to cut down straight like this. Fold, fold, fold. And one thing you can see is that this is a very sticky batter. Yeah, I see that. But it's just just keep going till it's homogenous and it all looks. I love this brown. It's beautiful. It's marbled. I love it so much. I painted my house and looked at this buckwheat. So <laughs> it's a beautiful color. And this is a signature dish at the Gary Danko restaurant. Correct. So you can get it with smoked salmon, or you can order it with three or four different types of caviar. It's so, delicious. So I don't mix it completely. You see a little bit of egg white fluffy right. in there. And then basically this gets covered again, and then on to um, the proofing period. The proofing period. So I basically take this and I will put it. Um, I will put it, just cover it, and leave it until at my party that night. So you can make it in one. So most of your work is done up front. Ooh. Which is how restaurants work and how we are efficient that way. So. Yes. So anyhow. See, um, I wait to the last minute to do everything, Gary. Wow. <laughs> So this is covered for an hour or however long you want to take it, and then boom, it ends up. Oh my gosh, it grew! It grew, look at that. So you can just see how beautiful exploded. the webbing is on this. It's yeah, beautiful. incredible, but you know, I want you to see how sticky this is. You yeah. see it, and it just 
goes amazing. back down into. So if you touch it, so this is what they call gluten. That's saying that's what allows yes. bread to rise, etc. So basically, this one's ready to go. We're then gonna fill. We also include with it a bottle, like a squirt bottle. It's basically like a sawed-off um, tip on this. And yes. It's filled with a container. Batter. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So you want to put it. You want to make sure when you put stuff in here that you do it close to when you're gonna prepare them. Otherwise, the yeast will erupt oh, like and blow up. You know, like no, you bet. I guess I have that. <laughs> Pasta. So anyhow, we're just going to fill that, and the easiest way I find is just to take a spoon and then just kind of spoon it in there. Yes. You know, in the restaurant we use what we call a, I call it a blé gun. Blé gun. It's also known as a pancake plopper is what we also call it. Oh, but, gorgeous. So this basically is something that will disperse the sticky batter very easily. Not everyone starting to turn me on, Garrett. <laughs> and you'll see it will just cut you a little, oh. a little donut. <laughs> oh, yes. So anyhow, when we're making like 50 of these at a time, we can go boom, 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 boom. Right, but in the kit, we get one of these saw off. Correct, okay. you know, and those work pretty well. The same thing, you're just gonna do exactly the same thing. You wanna, you know, if you put it in there like half an hour before, you wanna just kind of tap it, just to settle it as you saw that dough went down. Right. And then you wanna let it go in there and then you're just gonna squirt it into the batter, just like the tablespoon. Yep, okay. Into the hot clarified butter. Clarified butter, now what is clarified butter? Clarified butter. Well, you know butter, right? <laughs> boom, Pete boom, Garrett. boom, right? Look at so. this skin and the shiny coat. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever made an omelet before and you put a tablespoon or two of butter in there and the high heat takes it and it browns all the butter and you got burning stuff going on. I have no idea what you're talking about. Because you don't know. <laughs> right? <laughs> try it sometime. Put a tablespoon of butter will. and turn the heat on. And basically, I've sort of shown you right here what it is, that butter is 80 to 82% butter fat. Okay. And so that's basically the clarified butter. On the top, you have the milk salts. I know you're gonna drink it, because <laughs> I get you a straw. Yeah, but I I and so at the bottom here is the water, because water is heavier and it will sink to the bottom. Okay. So what we do is we decant it, and then we end up with that beautiful, oh, yes. that beautiful okay. clear and clarified butter. And this comes in the butter. kit as well. Correct. Wonderful. So anyhow, the, the benefit of this is that, you know, obviously butter gives you flavor, but whole butter, you can only heat it to about 350 and then it starts to decompose. This butter, you can get it up to 4 or 450. So you can fry it, you know, because if you put water in the butter into the pan, it's going to sizzle and spark. But then it's a great makeup remover as well. And this is similar to ghee, like they use in India. Ghee is a little more cooked and a little more caramelized, but this will stay in your refrigerator for months. Good. So if you want to make an omelet, you just go, turn your pan on high, put the butter, eggs, omelet. Perfect. All right, so the next part is that we're going to, we'll show you how to do the salmon after that, but I have to wash my hands. Wash your hands. All right, thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs> Take your time, Gary. Gary, you're back. You're so back. You're delicious. back. Delicious. All right, Violet. So you ready? Oh, now it's balsam. What's happening? I'm also a doctor too, but no, we're going to um, deal with the salmon here because basically this comes pre-sliced and prior back. And this comes in the kit. Correct. So basically, I just cut it through the back here, and then I'm just going to flip it out onto the. I'm going to flip it out onto the top of this because I want to be able to peel the salmon off. So. And you use the glove, why? Well, I don't want you to go show to your show tonight smelling like fish. So you <laughs> Probably can smell, smelling worse. You can smell worry. what it smells like. It's delicious <laughs> on the nose. Yes, but, but you wouldn't want any of your body parts <laughs> to smell like that. <laughs> so Anya, before you cook the blinis, you want to get your salmon. And basically, I take it and I make it into these little piles here. And so what happens is that, um, you know, when the blinis are coming fresh out of the hot clarified butter, all fried and crisp, we can just take them, set them on there, and do it very quickly. Because these are best enjoyed um, hot, oh, yes. you know, very hot. So, also with that, we uh, the kit comes some creme fraiche in this little thing, um, and then we have the Osetra caviar. Again, this is sustainable caviar from the Sacramento Delta, Ooh. and Ali makes this for us. Um, so you can just see that basically. We have a nice Delicious. ounce here. Oh, an ounce of caviar in the kit. So you guys you know, caviar is basically the, the row of the sturgeon 
And so this is Ocetra, and there are three types you can get, Beluga, Ocetra, or Sabruga. Okay. And those are named after the species of sturgeon in which they come from, because sturgeons are the dinosaurs of the ocean. So anyhow, the Beluga you can't consume in the U.S., it's illegal until they make it sustainable, but this is the Ocetra. Smaller oh, Beluga species. is illegal? And yeah, so, eh. oh, okay. Anyhow, the thing is when you get really busy, you know, also comes the mother of pearl spoon. Oh my god. This would make some nice The details, Gary, the details. It. Anyhow, you're supposed to just spoon it on, but when we go very quickly, I like to take a plastic yeah. bag and I put the caviar into a bag like this. Okay. And so basically when you do it, you can just squeeze, squirt right down and you can squeeze it right on top very quickly. This caviar is very sticky and so, and then the creme fraiche, you can see my baggy room of eminence here. This is gonna go down on the bellini. We're gonna put the salmon on top, and then that, and then some chopped chops. Delicious. Can we make the bellinis? What do we do with We're the pancake? Ready. We're ready. We're ready. Also, if you have ba pancake batter left over, they're beautiful the next day for breakfast pancakes with maple syrup. Oh, don't have to spend the night. So save your batter. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna to move to the stove and I'll show you how to do it. Oh, wonderful. Ready to do it. So basically we have our sliced smoked salmon ready. Um, I have my creme fraiche and my caviar here. And then I have color fine butter. And I'm just gonna do this. So in the restaurant, when we cook something, we heat the pans without any fat in them. You don't want to get them too high, but it just helps you when you're ready to cook, do it so also. So I put butter in there. You see the pan's hot and right. it ripples like that. But what's important for these blinis is that you have a complete sheet of oil like this. So anyhow, we're gonna try it. And so when the batter hits the clarified butter in the pan, it should start cooking immediately. So this looks like it should. I'm gonna try one with the blini okay. plopper. I'll get my salt off. And then you get your other home version yes. since you're learning to cook. And yes. So all right, you can see it. Look at that, it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> The sound, the sound. I'm getting like preform shapes, but okay, there's one right there. Ooh, that sound. Right. Okay, so I'll you try see how they're frying this. immediately? So I'll go ahead it. and just go straight down in and just put a tablespoon or so in there. All right, and I'm gonna shake it, I'm gonna oh move my it. God, I'm a natural. And you're gonna do another one right okay, here. Okay, right here. Oh, beautiful. Oh my God. In the morning for breakfast, pancakes are larger, but Yes. Same process. So the next part is that you want to look at the blini, and what do you see happening? You see all the bubbles. The bubbles. Popping? The bubbles. Bubbles. So that means it's cooking, and basically it's forcing all of the moisture out of them, and they're surfacing on the top. So what you don't want to do is have a raw blini batter Ooh. in the center. But what you're looking for is that you want. Um, sometimes they connect. With them. You want to basically have them golden brown, and I can see they're not quite golden brown there. Right. Also here I have a paper towel, and then I have my cap, my cream fresh caviar and chives ready to go. Ready this, to go. These have to be eaten hot, as you know, in the yes. restaurant, because they're not very good cold. All right, we're going to look at one of these and see how it's doing. So, so this one I'm going to flip. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, oh. as golden as I want it. Right. But notice on this that it has a ridge around it. Right. And that occurs because there's enough clarified butter in there to float it and for it to dip in there. And so in essence, that holds a little dot of creme fresh and everything, but mostly it gives you a very crisp edge. Yeah. And so the beauty of these blinis are that you have a crisp blini buckwheat flavor. Um, you've got the flavor of the clarified butter, yes. and then you have the salty, smoky salmon, and then this, the briny algae. Hurry up, yes. I'm hungry, come on. I know, look. look. Oh, they're beautiful. All right. Oh my God. So you want to make sure you flip away from you instead of splatting oil all over yourself. Um, as a chef, I can touch things. Ooh, they're like Kim Kardashian kind of. <laughs> so you just shake them a little, and then we're gonna look at the bottom of them. Okay. So very quickly, oops. That one's not ready, but we're just waiting for that. So. Delicious. All right. If we get it ready, So go. these you're gonna handle like a pastry bag. You're gonna put them here, and you're gonna put just a little dot, unless you want to have a pearl necklace all over your breast. Oh, You'll later. have too much gun fresh dripping all over no. yourself. All right, <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the blini on there, and then, okay, just a little more, and then we're ready, so. So basically, I just keep this, and I serve them to the guests, and I see a bunch of your fans building here. I don't know, you oh, must have oh, Instagrammed they, them. Oh, I could. They're the peeping toms. I know. <laughs> 
didn't follow that no trespassing sign. Okay, so we're just going to turn this off. And I'm going to move this over here. You can okay, put, put just a little, a little just down, a like the size like a of a drop. dime. Like that much? Correct. And so then I'm just going to go. take this and we're going to put it right on top. Oh, God, amazing. Okay. And then we're going to take the caviar. The caviar. And remember, you're the one on control. So if you want a lot of caviar. Oh, I love it. You can do that, but okay, delicious. All right, so why don't you have one? Ooh. Oops, I forgot the chocolate. Oh gosh, yes. You maybe don't like green on your stuff, but they do add a little bit of flavor. So. Oh, gosh. Oh. Ooh, look how elegant I look. <laughs> delicious, Gary. Oh my God. And where do we get this kit? Um, on, on Instagram, you can go on Gary Danko Instagram. Um, there's only one. It's the real Gary Danko, but. Mm. Mm. These are perfect with your rosé. Where did your rosé go? Oh, there it is. They are delicious. And ladies, to pair with your equatorial desert rosé one. Delicious. Oh my god. They're very celebratory. Mm. Have another if you like. Well, let me go give these to the guests. Okay. Yes. Mm. Look, we have guests, ladies and gentlemen. Try. Try. Free Gary Danko food. Free Gary Danko food. They're on the time running. Delicious. <laughs> They're just flying out of there. Here's some more. Oh my god. Oh, I forgot the chocolate. Look, I'm helping. I finally am helping. We're hiring you now. <laughs> I hope you don't do a background check. <laughs> I just hope you can fit between the two. <laughs> This has been Violet Jean Mervin with the second annual Pink Sonoma. Here's a good Eric, you can have this one. And napkin.